Hey, hey, welcome to Jessica Stories. I'm Jessica Carney, and I will be your host. This is a Christian podcast to remind you that God is in the details of your daily life and that we can always find a way to see the silver lining in all of life's experiences. I am so determined to help you grow your confidence in God and his plan for you. Hello, friends. It is late at night and there are still cars driving by the trailer. And so if you hear them, I'm sorry, but welcome to the podcast. I wanted to share what is adding light to my life. And right now, honestly, it is these incredible trees everywhere in the city of Boise. We are here for a few days with Ben's sister's family. And I had no idea that Boise is called the city of trees. But now I know why, because there's huge, amazing, gorgeous trees all over this area. And I'm just loving it so much. Uh, Reagan, Reagan is not with us. It's our first time parted from her. She stayed back with grandma in Twin Falls because tomorrow we get COVID tested. We're going to have our test so that hopefully we will get negative results back and be able to go to Alaska on Wednesday morning. So that is our hope. We'll see how it goes. That is, that's where we're at in life. I hope that you are doing well. I hope you're healthy. I hope that you're finding time to like nourish your spirit and your emotions and your physical body. And and just during this pandemic, it's just wild and an insane and interesting time to live. And I know that it can really be challenging too. And so I'm just want to send you some peace and goodwill. Hopefully, hopefully you're doing all right. If you're not, I hope to entertain you today. (laughs) I hope to put a smile on your face and remind you that God loves you, that he knows you, and that you are of enormous worth to him. So let's get into today's story. But before, I want to ask you two questions, okay? I want you to listen and I want you to answer honestly. Be honest with yourself. Here we go. Question number one. When was the last time you second-guessed yourself? So you made a decision, and then you second-guessed yourself. Question number two. Before you make a decision, do you need to have someone else validate your decision before you act on it? Do you? Now, maybe not all decisions, but like big decisions or things that require action, that require you to change or do something significant, do you need to be validated? Now look, for years, my friends, I would flip-flop between feeling really good about something and then totally second-guessing myself. Do you know what this resulted in? (laughs) This resulted in feeling stuck. Stuck. You know what being stuck is? It really sucks. And It means no movement, no momentum, and no progression. It's not a place I enjoy being. And yeah, I've spent a lot of time in that stuck place. And if you are stuck because you're constantly second guessing yourself, I am here to tell you, darling, dearest friend, that it doesn't have to be that way. You don't have to stay there. And there is a different way. You can get unstuck. And I'm going to help you. I'm going to open your mind to how that might happen, okay? (laughs) Okay, I want you to identify what you can do right now to help yourself from getting unstuck. Maybe there's something in your life that you feel stuck about. You don't know how to move forward. You don't know what the next step is, and you just keep going around the same thought pattern in your mind. And what does it do? It keeps you in the same place. Well, I want to tell you a story. (laughs) story time because that's what I love to do I'm gonna tell you a couple stories one story is from a good while ago but I really second guess myself so here's the thing I'm gonna go fast because there is like a very detailed version of this story and while I know you love listening to me I want to be respectful of your time so here we go it was the first summer I was living in America after I'd been to one year of college at Brigham Young University I got a job as an actress at a dinner theater Max in dinner theater to be exactly correct and you know what it doesn't even exist anymore yes (laughs) isn't that so very sad but anyway I was a maid in the morning and an actress at night super fancy (laughs) in the gem state of Idaho. 
<laughs> so about halfway through this little adventure of living in Idaho and performing, I met this intriguing, fun, blonde Idaho boy <laughs> called Ben Carney. <laughs> and he had just returned from serving a mission for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, which is a church that I'm a member of. And I was super drawn to him because I wanted to go on a mission. I wanted to go on a mission. And I was so, so excited. And I wanted to befriend him so that he could tell me everything there was to know about going on a mission. <laughs> but uh, quickly, the million questions I had about his mission turned into a million questions I now had about him. <laughs> and before I knew it, I couldn't even stop thinking about him. And my desire to serve a mission, let's just say, turn into a different type of desire. <laughs> if you know what I mean. <laughs> but before, before things had gone too much further, we were getting pretty serious. And marriage came up as a topic. I know, maybe you're like, oh my goodness, you were so young. I was really young. And that is just part of my story. But we did start talking about marriage and we started to plan our lives together. And while the concept of getting married young was so scary to me because I always said, I will not be one of those people that gets married young. No, no, no. And I hated going back on my word. But honestly, let's all be honest. Once you get into adulthood, you, and especially once you have kids, you end up doing a lot of things you said you would never do. But aside from that judgment I had over getting married young, when we would talk about getting married, I felt so peaceful. <laughs> so the thing is, I'm from England and he's from Idaho and he needed to meet my parents. So one Christmas, he flew all the way to England to come visit my family. Now, pause. Pause on the story. This is an important part. Prior to going to college, I had never had a boyfriend. I had never kissed a boy. I just found I didn't want to be someone that was like sappy about boys and I felt like it gave me power not to allow myself to fall in love at a young age I don't know it, it served me well in lots of ways honestly because I didn't get into boy trouble and I didn't have boy drama but I was very focused on going on a mission and doing these goals that I had and I just saw boys as a huge distraction as a teenager and so my parents had never seen me date and I had never dated someone in front of my parents. So keep that in mind as I go on with the story. <laughs> so Ben comes to England, right? He comes over to meet the family and ask my dad if he can have his blessing to marry his daughter, me, you know. And let's just say everything went down the drain because I couldn't be myself. I was so concerned about what my parents would think and I didn't know how to act normal because I was like, oh my goodness, my parents are here and I haven't dated him in front. I don't know. It was just weird and I couldn't be myself and it was awkward and it was just, oh, I just second guessed everything. So much so that we entered England experience planning a marriage. We flew home and we were not boyfriend, girlfriend. Yeah, that was a really long, long plane flight next to each other. And this happened multiple times. I flipped, I flopped back and forth. Uh, do I marry him? Do I not? Ha, ha, who am I trying to please? Ha, ha. And it was so painful. It was exhausting and it was damaging. But my darlings, don't worry, it doesn't end sad because eventually I figured it out. I figured it out why I kept second guessing myself because I was caring so much about being validated by others. I was caring so much about what other people thought that I wasn't receiving the peace because I wasn't seeking validation from the truest of all sources, who is God my father in heaven, your father in heaven. He is the source. And so when I let go of all of that judgment that need to be validated, I was able to receive that peace and it came flowing and flooding back into my life. And then it became a really easy decision because I was like, oh, I've been looking in the wrong places for validation. And I wanted to share this story first with you because it was such a painful experience and I felt so stuck. 
so many times. And I have had that feeling so many times after, up until now in my life. And as I was in the depths of depression, I spent most of my time feeling stuck. And I felt trapped in my thoughts. And I didn't know how to get out of them. But it is through educating myself through scriptures, I have come to learn that certain thoughts just do not come from God. (laughs) And yet those are the thoughts that trigger this reaction that sends you into a place of being stuck. And um, the thing is, truth bomb coming up. Are you ready for this? Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, that's right. (laughs) Um, Truth bomb is... The person that is most thrilled when you are stuck is Satan. It is the adversary, the devil. If he can get you stuck, then you don't do anything. He doesn't have to get you to do terrible things. He just has you to get you stuck so you don't move forward. God's plan for you is always moving forward. Even if it is the tiniest, the smallest little steps. What do we learn in Doctrine and Covenants? In the scriptures, we learn that we will grow line by line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. It might be tiny, tiny inches forward, but they are going forward. And when you are stuck, Satan is thrilled because you are less of a threat when you are stuck. And I have come to learn this truth so fiercely in my life that I need to recognize when I'm stuck because it still happens. I'm a human being. Thank you very much. But as I can recognize it faster, then I can do the steps that help me progress forward and get out of being stuck, which open up the windows of heaven, which open up that connection to God. And he is able to guide me to walk beside me and I want to receive revelation from him. Ah, oh, big truth bomb. You're welcome. You know what else doesn't happen when you're stuck is you don't learn more. You don't progress, right? And this is what David A. Bednar said. He said, as learners, you and I are to act and be doers of the word and not simply hearers who are only acted upon. So when we are stuck, when we are not choosing for ourselves and using our God-given gift of agency, We are being acted upon by Satan. Boom. Nothing good comes from that. So another amazing reason to recognize when you're being stuck. And when we second guess ourselves, we get ourselves stuck because we don't make a decision. Because we don't move forward. We don't utilize that agency in our life. And who's happy? You know who's happy. And we're not going to make him happy because I couldn't care less about Satan, except on how to defeat him and to become conqueror with God as my guide. That's what I care about. Okay, a scripture that also supports this is in 2 Nephi chapter 10, verse 23. And it says, cheer up your hearts and remember that ye are free to act for yourselves, to choose the way of everlasting death or the way of eternal life. (sighs) We get to choose. And the way we get to choose is we have to get out of being stuck, (laughs) right? Sometimes God reveals magnificent truths to us. Sometimes he gives you your next step and it's there and we're just about to take it. And then we second guess ourselves and get stuck. Or and then we're about to make the choice, but we look to someone and we're like, please validate me because I'm scared and I'm nervous. And <laughs> and then what do we do? We get stuck. We need to get unstuck. Now, because I'm still human, just like you and me, we're all beautiful. I think you're humans. Maybe you're aliens. Hi, aliens. Are you listening to me? Anywho, you're probably a human. We are continually going to have opposition and most likely we are going to continually have opportunities to get stuck or to progress and that happened to me just the other day I was having a conversation with Ben and I have got a little bit of out of balance this last week we've just got off of our schedule we were in Twin Falls again getting our 
what is it? Our trailer and our truck fixed again. You know, drama. There has to be opposition in all things. There's no surprise to that, right, friends? I talk about it all the time. And because of that, I was just off my routine and I had got out of balance. And I was feeling frustrated because I wanted to work on all these different projects. But because we don't tend to have a lot of internet access as we travel, um, it was meaning when I do have internet access, all of my time was getting committed to certain things. And I had this thought like, well, maybe I should just stop the podcast. Maybe this is just not helping me right now. And this is not. And I just was like, uh-huh, uh-huh, please, someone tell me what to do. I just I want this to go away and I want balance, but I don't know how to get that. And I felt stuck, right? I just wanted to quit everything and stop progressing and be stuck. And you know how that felt, those thoughts? They felt gross. They felt stressful. They felt, they, I felt anxious. Um, my heartbeat was racing as, but not in like, oh, I'm so excited, but like, oh, I'm going to have an anxiety attack type thing. And then I remembered, Jessica, Satan is trying to get you stuck right now. He doesn't want you to progress. He doesn't want you to use the atonement of Jesus Christ to figure out how you can create balance again and still do things that you are compelled to do and still be a light and still share goodness. He doesn't want you to discover that, but God is totally capable of helping you know exactly what you need to do to do it. And I'm so grateful that, you know, after an hour of having some of these thoughts, I just went straight into the six steps of the True Confidence course. I write them down. There are six different questions of each step and I journal it. And before I knew it, I had worked through being stuck. Before I knew it, I remembered who I was and who I belonged to and who is my biggest, most radiant, most most glorious cheerleader. And then I got really focused on what are my strengths right now and what are my weaknesses that are holding me back and how can I look at these weaknesses in a new way and see as an opportunity to grow. And then I created I am statements to transform my thoughts about the situation. I repented of things that were holding me back, things that I was choosing in a selfish way that were not helping me or my family. And I was able to know exactly what I needed to let go of and then utilize the power of the atonement to repent of it and to become clean. And then I figured out, okay, I need to add light to my life. I need to come out of this place and I need to be better. So I figured out three different things I could do that very next morning that I knew would add light to my life, would open my heart up and put me in a place that would help me feel close to God and receive the revelation that he wants to give me. That is available to me. And as I went through these steps... Oh my goodness, I came up with an amazing plan. An amazing plan that felt peaceful. Suddenly, like, the smile was back on my face. My heart rate was at a very normal, healthy place. And I felt invigorated with peace. Because I was moving forward. I wasn't stuck anymore. I wasn't stuck in those thoughts, in second-guessing myself, in giving up, in surrendering. Instead... I was moving forward inch by inch, line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. But my progression was forward. (laughs) And I am so thankful. You know, when we learn new frameworks and tools, it doesn't mean that suddenly we will never have the same challenges. We're never going to have those negative thoughts again. But what it does mean is we recognize them faster and we have the tools to combat it, to win that battle, to overcome and progress into that more glorious version of ourselves so to you know the other day it wasn't today it was the other day that this happened I even though I had this challenge I was a more glorious version of myself than I was back when I was second guessing flip-flopping back and forth deciding if I was going to marry Ben or not because I'd worked on it and I hope 
that the next time I second guess myself, I'm a little bit more of a glorious version of myself because I'm better at using these tools and seeking God in the details and using the amazing gifts and the atonement that has been offered to me. I encourage you to do the same. If you are feeling stuck in anything, if you need validation for something in order for you to move forward, I promise you, you can get unstuck through your savior. You really can. And if you need a framework, I have one. It's the True Confidence course. Go to the trueconfidencecourse.com. There's a free mini course that you can just enjoy and see if you like the way I teach and the things I teach. If they make sense to you and open up your heart, then go get the course and get unstuck. It will help you. It has transformed me and it transforms me day after day and I use it all the time. And I know that you have marvelous things to do. God has an amazing work for you and I want you to be progressing forward. So let's all get unstuck. Thank you so much for listening, for being here and for being you. If this podcast has helped you receive more light into your life, if it's helped you grow your confidence in God and see the silver linings in your life experience, would you hop onto iTunes and give it a five-star review and share it with a friend that you think would benefit too because this world needs more light. So let's all seek light and shine bright.